All right, everybody, here is the reactor Mark IV. And I'm gonna break this down for everybody, you know, especially all the new people. Actually, all of you are new, even the OGs, because nobody has seen this but me in the current form it's in. So, this reactor is a microwave pyrolysis reactor, meaning it uses microwaves to break down or thermally depolymerize whatever type of biomass we put in here. We're doing plastic. So, right now, all that this thing has is three transformers three magnetrons which um is the original idea was to have five but you know things have happened since then and three is all that we need for this scale anyway now <clears throat> my camera is absolute brexit so you won't be able to see anything but these are all different types of meters except for this, this is a timer but these two meters tell me the exact amount of amperage amount of kilowatt hours all that type of stuff you can actually kind of see some of the stuff here that this thing consumes. Um, of course, it's not exact, but you know, it's close enough to where we can actually have numbers to work with. So, you know, you can promise me, I promise you, I will share with you all the information because you can't see crap because my camera's Brexit. Anyways, another huge part of this is this, um, this is the generator box where all the transformers are. The transformers... Transformers are submerged in oil. They get way too hot just to be air cooled. I tried it, it does not work. You have to submerge them in oil. And as you see, there is a copper coil in that oil. And that copper coil actually has water running through it. So they're oil cooled and the oil is water cooled. That's this plumbing line here that you see. Um, and another huge part of this reactor is there are blades in here that agitate and spin around and this is a motor here a DC motor can go forward it can go in reverse and this will allow me to agitate the plastic all that's in here kind of similar to like a turntable you know everything always works better when you're cooking it with agitation uh, lastly let's go over the plumbing all right and all the little features like that so this is a window here this window you really can't see shit through it anyway when the thing is on I used to have a light up there but even with the light you couldn't see shit unless there was plasma forming you can see plasma even without the light so whatever no none of that it doesn't even matter it's irrelevant um these two spots used to be other waveguides we used to have five magnetrons we only have three now so i just basically terminated them with just a piece of metal My, no microwaves can get through no vapors can escape this is the feed flange where we're going to load the plastic in um and this over here is the lid this is what we open up at the end to get all of the carbon out and i'm going to open that up pretty soon to show you guys what the inside looks like show you guys the blade spinning this is a pressure release valve 30 psi this is a pressure release valve set at i think it's either two or three psi we really aren't going to be working under that much pressure this is the plumbing system it goes up from the reactor it's all insulated and it comes down into this condenser here libic condenser and this is where all the oils are going to condense out hopefully at least most of them because they're gonna it's, this this plumbing actually gets really hot and it cools down drastically and it comes down into this tank here and this is where we collect the oils and i can collect them and check on them even in the middle of the thing running because i can just open or close that valve and unscrew that the tank which is on union and then we have this complex filtering system because the vapors that come from the plastic do have a lot of contaminants on them just being virgin or on their own so that we have a steel wool and copper um con heat exchanger and condenser and filter and that is going to react with any sulfides that's going to react with any um chlorides and and all that type of stuff you know like so um all that type of stuff will bond to the the metals and they'll cause them to rust and corrode we, we can always replace them this i believe is another one as well another metal heat exchanger as well as a uh a filter and it comes up into here which is an activated carbon clay and zeolite filter and this will help catch any other little particulate organic matter particles in the vapor and then this is another activated carbon foam filter that once again is to collect any particulate matter left over in the vapor um and the the hope is that this vapor pretty much has all the oils out of it by then so no oils travel from that point forward and then it actually comes down here from this um the end of the filters into this little split here 
and this split is where I actually will plumb it either into a yoga ball, which I'll fill up the yoga ball with the vapors because the vapors are flammable and energy dense, or I can actually plumb them directly to my distiller, which is over there, and my distiller is what takes the oil which comes out of here and converts it to gasoline, diesel, all that type of stuff, because the oil that comes right out of here is a mix of all this stuff, impure, um, and it needs to be distilled, so, that being said, uh, it's quite the explanation, but last thing, now I see it now, last two things actually, I, uh, we pump it with argon to make sure all the oxygen's out, make sure the environment's inert, pyrolysis happens with no oxygen, and last thing, I have a temperature gauge here, K-type thermometer, and I have three probes, the first probe goes to touch to check the oil temperature the second probe goes to the external of this reactor like so it's touching the underside of it that's where it gets hottest so it lets us know the external temperature and the last probe is right here and it lets us know the vapor temperature ideally i like another probe which is actually inside the reactor touching the body but that's not possible right now with what i have because of the spinning blades they mess it up and um so we don't know the actual true internal temperature of the surface of the plastic but you're gonna see we can guess it's gonna get pretty hot so this is going to be what agitates the plastic as it's in there these helical spiral dna blades are gonna be in there they're going to agitate the plastic around, help it get exposed in all areas, creating even carbonization or even breaking down of all areas of the plastic. And here I have a 55 gallon drum and this is, is what supplies the cooling water to the transformers, to the Liebig and to the other Liebig. I have another Liebig um, condenser on my distiller. And this provides the cooling water to all three, all from one pump. I just have it split up to go to the different things. And this is enough water to where we can run the reactor continuously for at least, I would estimate, at least like 10 to 12 hours before it actually starts to have issues with heating. So I just made a funnel, a hopper out of this old bucket I used for something else. Uh, as I load the plastic in, I turn the motor on to spin the blade so that way it's kind of like, you know, evenly being mixed together. All right, now we have the plastic in there. We are ready to go. Now, last things last, we need to push out all the oxygen. Once again, pyrolysis is a process. Um, in the absence of oxygen, anaerobic, you could say, anaerobic depolymer depolymerization. Now, with that being said, I want to uh, note something. So we use the argon to push it out. Um, but once you push it out, you can get this thing started, right? Once you pretty much have about as much oxygen out as you can with the argon, what you have to keep caution with though is you cannot rotate the blades right away you need to wait about at least like 20 minutes after turning it on before you can rotate the blades and that's because even when you push out pretty much majority of the oxygen with the argon there will still be little pockets between the plastic sometimes um and so you know some plastic even has oxygen in its molecular structure but anyway when you rotate the blades you're going to release all that oxygen all at once and since it's not hot enough in there there's not enough vapors already formed in there that oxygen probably most likely most of the time is the perfect stoichiometric ratio to make a small explosion within the reactor 
Now, this will be a small explosion if this happens. Um, this happens to me a few times, so it's not like gonna blow up anything or go crazy, but um, it does damage some of the equipment, so obviously that is not uh, desirable. Um, and of course, if you have an explosion, that means there's a lot of oxides forming and a whole bunch of nonsense bull crap. So pretty much just wait until, for I, I wait until the 30 minute mark before I start agitating the plastic. And besides, it's not even hot until that point, and you really get the most out of agitation once this whole chamber night is nice and toasty. Argon. Argon is on. We can open up this pressure release valve a little bit and we can hear some of it come out. Hear that? So that's a good sign of air tightness to me. Um, usually if this system has any leaks, it won't really build up enough pressure for it to make that sound. Another way is this is the valve to the rest of the plumbing. We'll close this. Listen for leaks. Sometimes you know you can put a flange on wrong, not tighten it enough and it might leak or the front. Um, open up this valve. Yup, that's building up pressure. Sounds good. Of course, there still could be leaks. We'll see them when the thing's on. Um, and after that, another way I like to just look down, I like to come to the end here. This is where the, the gas is coming out. I put my finger there to see if I can feel it. Obviously, if I can't feel it, there's either a clog or a leak somewhere. Then I take um, a lighter. Now, there's nothing in there but argon and air right now, right? So it is not going to explode. And I just take this lighter and I do that. I, And you can see that it's actually putting the flame out. Now, if this is just air coming through, it wouldn't put the flame out like this. Well, it might, but not to this extent. So this is letting me know pretty much this is pretty much argon in here. Um, and I just wait a little bit longer after that. Like I said, there's no real way to know for me until I get an oxygen sensor, an O2 sensor, for, to know when all the oxygen's out. I just gotta assume and play lucky, but you know, you can be smart with it. Don't be stupid and you'll be okay. It really, a flame is having trouble surviving in that in this environment because it's really pretty much mostly argon at this point. So I would say it's safe. Now, for safety purposes, I always turn on the microwaves, the magnetrons, in five minute interval so I just turn on one at a time for five minutes so by the 15 minute mark we have all three on and that's because if there is an explosion the explosion is going to be a lot worse if there's three times the power versus just one in there on top of that if there's any shorts or any issues or anything really any electrical things too it's better to just have one going on and turn that off and have three make it three times worse so I, I, I just do that's just how I do it I play safe um, you know, everybody has their own way of doing things. That's how I do it. If you don't like it, kiss my piss, mate. All right, so the first thing we turn on is going to be the pump, the water pump. It's this switch right here. Um, so I don't know if you can see that, but water, let me see if I can, I want to show you. It looks, looks kind of cool. Okay, you can't see. F it. Anyway, there's water coming through here now. Um, and water coming through the, the condensers as well. Next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the magnetron fans work, both of them. They cool off the magnetrons. Without them, the magnetrons would die within seconds. So we like to just turn one on. That works. Second one. That one works. Cool. Next, turn on the internal fans. These cool off the capacitors within and keep the inside of this from getting too hot. Make sure those work. Cool. Next, I turn on every single transformer individually to make sure none of them are having any shorts, nothing's going wrong. So that way when I go to turn them on for real, um, when we're really doing this, we're, have to, you know, we're not going to be caught by surprise. So the Magnetron switches are down here. First one. Alright, that one's good. Second. That's good. Third. Cool. All three magnetrons work, all three transformers, capacitors work, all the fans work. Now we will turn this on for real. Alright, turning on one transformer. Let's go. First of all, turn on make sure pumps on, internal fans. Make sure the magnetron fan is on. And now we are turning on magnetron number three. And it is on. And I know it's on because my meters down here are telling me that we're pulling 18 amps. With that being said, we will turn the rest on in five minute interviews. Intervals, let me start this clock too.